Alrighty, um, we are live. We're playing Warframe for the first time. New new game to know live. I'm here with. Do you mind introducing yourself? Hello, hello. We are here indeed. I am Toron Smok. I am Dragon. I am going to be the teacher for this Warframe first experience. <laughs> yeah, I came from Destiny, so that shouldn't be too hard of a transition, I believe. There's yeah, there's a lot of differences in the actual moment to moment gameplay. Um, Warframe tends to lean more into the ability spam side of things, but from our little chat about Destiny playstyles, it seems like that's gonna fit real nice for you. Yeah. So, I mean, we're both war we're both Voidlock mains, so yes, and yes, indeed. And I also actually a uh, little bit of background that I didn't mention previously. I played Destiny one, then Warframe, then Destiny two, then back to Warframe. So I've ping ponged between the two a lot. All right. <laughs> See. How do I convince my friends that Hunter's a shit, cl shit class and they should play Warlock? <laughs> um, so, Hunters, a lot of the time, rely on stuff that they stole from Warlocks with the 3.0 updates to stay alive. Warlocks <laughs> are still better at the stuff that those Hunters stole, like Restoration, Grenades, and Devour. I see. So... If they're a Void or Solar Hunter main, there's a potential way to sway them. If they're a Stasis Hunter main, point out the fact that Stasis Warlock is actually still playable, unlike <laughs> Stasis Hunter, which is worthless. And the if they're around. an Arc Hunter... Okay, yeah. If they're an Arc Hunter, though, you'd have no chance. Arc Hunter is so fucking fun. Even I love Arc Hunter. So. <laughs> Alright. So, I'm gonna be choosing the Paradox oh, yeah. Path, because that looks better. Yeah, so they're both really good. Um, the Paradox Path, I think, is going to be longer until you're able to play with other players, and you can always go back and do the other one at some point. Um, the classic new player experience would be the other path, the Warframe Path. Yeah, fuck it, we do Hunter, we do Paradox. Okay. He looks cool, I like his rule. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, uh, bear in mind, though, as well, with the Paradox Path, it is going to be very different gameplay than what the rest of the game is going to feel like. The the Duveri Paradox is very much its own little content island in a good way. It's fantastic, but, you know. It will unlock a really easy way. I will hope for cutscene. Cutscene, I love cutscene so much. I love cutscenes, yeah. I'm not one of those fucking cutscene skippers. Oh my god. Uh, dude, I had, when I was teaching people Destiny around the time of Witch Queen, I had so many people skip the cutscenes in Witch Queen, I was like, no! This is the best story Destiny's ever told. Why would you skip it? Yeah. Actually, Red War is also really good. I like Red War. Red War was good, but, like, the best overall... Oh, Witch Queen, Witch Queen. Story. Let's still Witch Queen, yeah. <laughs> Red War was a great introduction. How many times will one fool die? i to pull up your stream so I can see where you're at on this stuff. How much will one... Proud humans. Oh shit, I have stuff in my foundry to claim. The need to the greatness of the eternal king. Wait, I didn't mean to claim that crap. <laughs> uh, claim what? I claimed the thing from my foundry that I meant to leave sitting in there for a little while longer. Oh, I so, see, I see. Oops. But it's okay. <clears throat> Just a mild goof. Mild goof, yes. I have a new frame and a new weapon to fashion and level, so I'm going to do that while you're on the solo part of the quest line. Uh, of course. Uh, Tim, how long is this cutscene? Jesus. Well, it is the introduction to the game for you, in this case, so... I see. Oh, lord. One of my homies is in my chat saying he's working on implementing Void Angels from Warframe into his D&D campaign, and that's horrifying. Dude. <laughs> Void Angels are... Ooh. Oh, yeah, fun fact, we are actually making a D&D campaign. And it's another continuation on the channel. Um, where you're making a horror D&D campaign, actually. Set in a world with four evil gods. Interesting. Who horrifically mut uh, mutate their followers. Is it expected that the players be good guys for this? Or is it like... Uh... You can be the bad guys. You can be the horror of this horror campaign. There in a are sense. no good guys. 
the only so the evil only, campaign the only Fun. non-religious faction in this world are radical witch hunters only to find honestly i've always wanted to do an evil campaign because I have a lot of really fun, like, Thank villainous you. kind of character ideas. Thank you, Booty Whisperer, for following. Thank you so much. Year by year, year by year. Wow. Oh, I yeah, gotta, no, I called my uh, alerts. Yes. There we go. Where is it? Where Thank is you, it? Booty Whisperer 200. Trapped in a spiral of <coughs> <country. laughs> such great plans. So, so for the dark gods to transform people. Yeah. Is yeah. he going to get transformed to a robot? Um, so not quite. Uh, head. Drifter Visage. Uh, oh, okay, so it has you customize your look at this state. I was wondering about that, because I did this with my Drifter already customized aesthetically. So it's letting you customize your look now. That makes sense. Wait, can I choose a different gender or neutral gender? Um, yeah, if you look at the faces, the two different parts of the face, some of them are more masculine, some of them are more feminine. Okay. So which ones you pick will help determine uh, will help determine that. And then you can also pick a voice that's masculine or feminine. So you do it piece by piece, which allows you to make characters that are kind of in between as well. You can make, you know, different degrees of non-binary gender fluid as well, which is kind of neat. Yes, I gotta fucking fit this to myself, <clears throat> right? Up to you how you want to handle it. <laughs> yeah, um, oh shit, I didn't fucking equip it. God damn it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. There we go. Equip that. Secondary face. All right, you, and it blends the two features, and then there's a slider for how hard it blends them. Hey there. Hey there, Nay, how you doing? Um, face blend, okay. let's do that. Okay, that let's looks see. like, that, that actually look, kind of looks like me. Um, skin color, <laughs> accents. Yeah. So you see, it's how to get rid of the beard. That's another features component, I believe. So you have very limited color options right now. Um, you don't have a lot to work with for that. Yeah, skin color, face blend. We got face blend. Yeah. Yeah. Accent color, lip color, all colors. <laughs> features. Do I click back? I think I click back, yeah. Uh, yeah, you click features or back. Either one would take you back to the general features. Yeah. That's like. And then you can do hair and beard style, yeah. That's, that's like my hairstyle right now. Um, yeah. Beard style, no beard, because I'm clean shaven. Um, uh -huh. Hair part. There we that go. just lets you uh, flip it, yeah. Hair color is black. <clears throat> Fuck, I don't have black. God damn it. Hair highlights. Let's yeah. go back white there. Hair tips. We'll have to get you some more colors soon. Soon, TM. Right. Soon, TM. Back. Eyes. I think eyes are fine. Voice. Drifter heroine. How do I listen to this? Yeah. Uh, it should play a little bit of it when you hover over it, I believe. But it's been weird about that recently, because I had a similar problem with... Um... I have some more home with some other stuff. Nora should help. What do you mean by that? There we go. Nora should help with what? What's it gonna be, pal? I'm not sure what that's referring to. I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna do God. this one. Oh no. This one's good. <laughs> ah. All right. We're, we ball. We ball. This is my character. Let's go. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Torin, again. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys? I oh, didn't have the follow done yet. <laughs> thank you. Let's go ahead and mark that off. Yeah. Wow. You just get stabbed. Damn. Um. Yeah. Okay, you're just dead. You, you do all that, and then you just get stabbed. Yeah. Wow. And then, watch. Boom. Yes, we're playing Warframe, yes. Why is my chat yep. so fucking goofy, man? What the hell? Where's my... Oh, yeah, your, your chat on stream is a little funky. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that one. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I need to fix this. This is... This is so goofy. Never done. Oh, he died again. Oh, great. Um, yeah. <clears throat> there we go. That's yeah. that's better, I think. But that was a little different. And meteor. There we go, there we go. Now, 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 now. Now, now, now this is good. Played it a few years back, I see, I see. There's a hand. I, I need to start figuring out the the chat thing. It's it's kind of goofy. Give me one Yeah. Second. 
I am trying to. I'm trying out like a bunch of new assets. I see. I see. There we go. That that works. That works. That works. Wake up, tarnished. We need you. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up, Tano. Oh boy, robot time. Hmm. All right, here we go. Oh, why is my sense so high? Uh, Warframe is a very fast, snappy game, so you do want to keep it kind of high. Like, don't turn it down a lot. I'm gonna turn it into like my. It's so <laughs> high. Oh my god. I'm just saying. Well, no, you can adjust the aim sensitivity separately. So I would say, like, if it's way too much, like, turn down the aim sensitivity, but leave like the look sense where it is, because, like, the look you need to be able to turn on a dime sometimes for Warframe. Okay. Like when you get into the main game, as long as you can handle it, I, I can't. Then this it's is, all right. I have like okay. severe. If, if it's too much, then you can turn it down. If it's so much, yeah. you can turn it down, man. Just, I'm just saying, like, don't make it slow because this is not a slow. This is not a slow shooter. You know what I mean? I see. I see. Okay, this is a little bit more yeah. manageable. That's good. Yeah. So my control. So my shift yeah. is my roll. Yeah. Yeah. To put it into a little bit of perspective in terms of the movement in Warframe, the most newbie basic. Warframe mode movement, it would put top tree dawn blades to shame. Damn. Yeah. Now what? New Tenno, it seems. Yes, it is. Okay, so I need to yep. kill these guys, right? Do I? I love yeah. murder. Oh, it's giving murder. you a it's giving you a prompt at top of screen. L shift to sprint for your abilities. Okay. The guidance thing. So you use that ability, and then it shows you the way. Do you know the way? Yes, we do. Yeah, that is a thing for the drifter specifically. Oh, I just died. Um. Oh, yeah, that guy was someone you were not supposed to fight. <laughs> you were oh. supposed to just go down, oh. like go down the stairs there and uh, avoid him. You're trying to escape because you're not well enough equipped to fight yet. I see. Basically. Yeah. Fight help. as you have to. Okay. Inject something into my cranium. I'll take that. <clears throat> Guidance. Hold to aim. Okay, I can kill you. Yes, can I be slow in the movement? I see. Top tier. Man, you know how much time I actually try yeah. to learn how to well skate in? It's nuts. Yeah, fortunately, the movement in Warframe is a lot easier than that um, because it is designed for high speed, crazy movement. I see. So, am I not supposed to kill him? No. I mean, if you can, you can, but he's a little up there in the level, and yeah, I would focus on just escaping. I see. If someone's in your way, shoot them, but otherwise I would just say follow the guidance. Alright. Follow the guiding hand, as much as you possibly can. Follow the great arm of the law. Can I kill you? No, I can't. This is too much of it. <clears throat> oh my god. Hmm. That's so sad, I can't kill them. Maybe this, maybe, perhaps. Wait, I can kill them now. Then I want a bit of range. That one is a little bit lower level than the other one, but you notice when he's blocking, you can't really hit him. So you have to catch him when he's not blocking. I see. So oh, like also Souls. that pistol you're using. Yeah, also that pistol you're using has a unique mechanic. You notice when it's reloading, yes. how it has that little thing at the bottom. And when the reload bar goes through that little bit at the bottom, it flashes yellow. If you tap reload again, when the reload progress meter is in that little bottom part from like when reloading from empty, uh, you get a damage boost for your next shot. Damn. So I reload. <laughs> Tap it again. Please jump over the railing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please jump over the railing. Yeah. Restore yeah. Health. Technically, those ones. Technically, those ones he could kill, but like it would not be easy. I see. Oh yeah, you're right about the damage boost. Damn. Yeah. Yep. Now, it's not normally worth trying to fiddle with that in the middle of combat, but like at this stage where that's the only weapon you have, if you gotta fight with it, you may as well use it to the greatest degree that it can be. I, I see, I see, I see. Two. <clears throat> what the fuck is that thing? Oh, that's the Aura Worm. Oh. Wait, wait, can I melee people? Not yet. <laughs> Soon, TM. Soon, TM. I love that word. I love. I love saying that. 
Yes. Right. Student TM is such a good little piece of vocabulary for online stuff. I'm gonna try and do my keybinds real quick. Let's see how the router is. Ooh, holy shit! This shotgun, twelve percent status per projectile. Damn. That is high as fuck. Wait, not right now. No. Wow. Oh. I don't know. I have to. I have to configure everything to what I'm used to. See, a lot of those controls are gonna be for Warframe mode, which you don't have yet. So, like. Some of it is stuff that you're going to want to wait and see on, as far as the configuration. I see. Yeah. <laughs> shotgun route? You gotta get I don't know. What shotgun mm -hmm. did you get? Oh, uh, Rauta. Yeah, Rauta, Rauta and Cedo are both really crazy shotguns for status. Um, but yeah, I, I just built the Rauta. I finished farming Rauta and Kulervo. Kulervo is the newest frame, who comes from a special thing within that... Uh, piece of content that you're doing the introduction to right now. I see. Uh, and his signature shotgun, the Rauta, has a really funny gimmick where every single pellet that it that it lands counts as a melee hit for building up your combo counter. Ooh, I see, I see. Yeah. It's kind of nuts, and it's designed for Calero because he is all about doing melee and building combo to do melee. So it just makes sense that his shotgun would lean into that. I see. Is it too late to mention that I I'm a Ragenhild main on Destiny? What? Uh, I'm a shotgun main on Ragnall? Destiny. Oh yeah, the Ragnold, the um, the fucking heavy ash hockey shotgun with the yeah. one-two punch. Yep. Oh, yeah, good one-two punch. Yeah, yeah. I made a crafted one just for my um hunter where I played the Arc Hunter all the time. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun. I also maybe have at some point. At one point, I had it down to be able to do the uh, weighted knife um, with Divinity and the Ragnild Damn. on uh, Solar Hunter. So I could Div, Ragnild, weighted knife into the Div bubble with the 1-2 punch buff. How much How much damage would you be doing? Um, approximately one metric fuck ton. Damn. Um, nothing that wasn't a boss survived. <laughs> I see. So major. Because I was also usually using Athrus's Embrace, so. Uh. I was and then you think heal nades. I was running the um, what's it called? Rafa is nuts. The, the young Ahamkara a lot. People compare yeah. to Guardians a lot for God knows why, but both sides are too powerful. They really meet, they we even care about each other. I see. Yeah, well, realistically, it's kind of a case of like, this comes up a lot in like anime power scaling discussions where it's like, okay, but they hit, handle such different power sets that they wouldn't even interact, right? Like, per, for example, people will try to be like, oh, well, would this character beat this character from Bleach? And it's like, a character from basically any other anime verse wouldn't be able to even touch a character from Bleach because the characters in Bleach are dealing with a spiritual element that the other anime verses don't handle. They have no way of physically interacting with them. And I feel like the um, the Tenno and the Guardians both have powers that the other would have no way of answering or dealing with. Yeah. To the point where there would be no point in them even trying to fight or even trying to judge how that would interact. I think uh, another discussion that I hate is a Spartan versus a Space Marine. Mm. I've heard that so many fucking times and I hate it so much. I'm I can imagine about, why. I'm spewing about 40k again. <laughs> Little thing about myself, I, I fucking love 40k. Yeah. Especially a Warframe that reverses time. Yeah, a Warframe that reverses time. Or a Warframe whose gut is a black hole. <laughs> yeah, you can't just... Literally a contained black hole. You can't best that, can you? But then, on the other hand, the Guardians have powers that are like the fundamental essence of the universe, you know? Yeah. You know, like the void, the void could arguably create a black hole anytime you want isn't if you're like powerful a, enough with isn't it. Isn't like a nova bomb literally just a black hole? The graviton lance shoots miniature black holes. True. <laughs> Limbo, who made the rift, right? That's another fair point. Although, okay, this is something that I brought up a few times. Who wins the eating contest of a devour voidwalker versus Grendel Warframe? I don't know. I, I'm not. Grendel Warframe really... is the one with the black hole gut, so. Uh. Like, the thing is, like, the Devourer Lock, the Devourer Lock will eat whatever they kill, but Grendel doesn't even have to be able to kill it. He can just shovel it in and eat it. Damn. However, there are things that Grendel can eat that will damage him when he eats them, but a Devourer Lock actually heals by eating things, you know? So it's like, oh, so who actually wins that contest? It depends on what they're eating. I see. Bombas.
Because they could both they could both eat infinitely, theoretically. True. <laughs> Would Kevin from Home Alone beat Ichigo from Bleach? Oh my god. They changed that, didn't uh, they? Huh? I don't know. Uh, Calamity Dragon says they changed that, didn't they? I don't know what they're talking about. Sorry. They changed... Oh, I'm probably talking about Grendel uh, being hurt by certain things that he eats. I see. Um, maybe? I don't recall. I don't recall hearing about that being fully changed, but I could be, uh, you know, I could be wrong on that. <clears throat> oh god, Chief Twitter is doing something weird. Elon was like, we are rate limiting Twitter because people keep on talking about rate limiting Twitter. So he just, right. he oh just, my god. He's just suiciding Twitter. Yeah, like, that yeah. was painfully stupid, frankly. General Grendel no longer takes damage from grenades <laughs> eaten, I think. Grenades eaten? Well, it wasn't oh just god. grenades, it was like, okay, if a Grendel got radiation procced, in an instance with a Nidus to enable friendly fire, and the Grendel ate the Nidus's maggots that he spawns, they would burst in his stomach and be able to kill him. Wow. That was one of the examples of like Grendel eating things that would kill him. Go in order, but don't fall behind now. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm looking at some Nidus skins and stuff. The Technosis skin for Nidus is so cool. If I end up playing him a lot, I'm probably gonna get this skin. I see. Because it kind of takes the infested like organic looking frame and makes him look kind of Gundam. Ooh. Yeah. Radiation procs are a fucking nightmare, yeah. <laughs> they are the worst. Wait, why does it say I'm unarmed? What the hell? Um, because in this space, no weapon. You're doing a little special thing. Look, there's a U. It's a mirror U. Oh, that's me? Yes. It's a, well, it's a mirror version of you. Look, they're smaller and they're wearing a different outfit. Yeah. It's a younger, different universe version of you. This is the paradox path. You are dealing with some fuckery. <laughs> I see. More fuckery than... Yes. You are literally in the midst of a paradox. Guide the reflection into the light. So I gotta Yeah, go so that purple that. glow? Yeah, you want to get him into it. Right. Oh, God. That light over there. Okay, so Kurobenko, you do realize we raised that redeem to 400 for a fucking reason, right? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Heads, That's shoulders, funny. knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Heads, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes, and ears, and mouths, and nose. Heads, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Wait, where the fuck is the light? Huh? Am I doing something wrong? There you go. You got it there. You got it there. You just got one of them. Now there's another one. Oh god. There's multiple levels of it. You have to look around for where there's another light, and then just, yeah, just always be watching your reflection and just move him to where he needs to be. The void itself is on a different level of fuckery than the light and dark. Hydrate? That's yes. true. That's true, but the Tenno don't have as much command over the void as the Guardians do over the light and dark, which is why, like, if they did meet, it would be impossible to actually judge. Because if they did, if the Tenno had the level of command over the void that the Guardians have over the light and dark, it would be an easy no-diff win for the Tenno if yeah. Guardians and Tenno were to fight. Wait, where's the other shadow? Where's the other light? What the hell is it? You gotta rotate around and look around. Uh, it's oh, it's never gonna look... It's never gonna be there when you're in that area. So you gotta be looking towards the opposite side. Oh, there it is. Like, it won't show up when you're near it. Yeah. I uh, need to jump over there. Um, it's mirrored around the center, like, radially. So you need to... Yeah. There we go. We did it. We did it. We did mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Deadlift contest. Rhino versus the Sunbreaker Titan. Ah, uh, I wouldn't do Rhino for that, because Rhino is not actually the physically strongest Warframe. Atlas is the physically strongest Warframe. Atlas versus the Sunbreaker, if you want a deadlift contest. The Void itself is difficult to explain even with the Ogre and try to explain it? I see. Yeah. Wait, how's my chat delay going on? What's my stream delay right now? Um... Uh, let's see. So, Bombastein is talking currently on screen on your stream for me. And just finished. He just finished talking and you just got on the horse. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's not that bad. Yeah. Um, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> Lavender. Lavender, my chat forgot Atlas exists. Everyone forgets Atlas exists. Until you see, oh yeah, he fucking punched a meteor so hard that it exploded into fragments that could be no harm. Kuro, I'm gonna make this a he rule. A I'm, I'm gonna make this a rule that you can only redeem this once per stream, just so I don't get fucking... You can't... You can put, um... 
You can put a cooldown on it, but you can also actually set redeems. Like, you can literally set redeems that they can only be redeemed a certain number of times per stream in general, or per user. So you can make it so each user can only do it once per stream, too. I, no, uh, yes, I, you are technically my father, but you never owned up to it. <laughs> Therefore, you have no will over me. Oh, deadbeat dad. Deadbeat dad, yes, deadbeat dad. I also disowned my other deadbeat father dad because he said rice was shit. So. That is true, Calamity. Yeah. yeah. Alright, fuck yeah. it. Just for you, Kuru. Just for you. Uh, yeah, the void of war friends. And toes, yeah, and and some toes. beast. Heads, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes, and... Oh, do I have to jump? Ears, and mouths, and nose. Heads, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Are you happy now? Oh my god, I, I hate that thing so much. I don't even know why... I don't even know why my co-owner yeah. Faroki made this. <laughs> we just kind of ran with it. <laughs> oh, he just, he just plopped that onto you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they just kind of did Fun. that. Portal. And now look, you get Warframes. Oh, nice. Right, which one now you have a choice. No, which one looks the best to me? What do I want to be? Mm. I want to be a space wizard. So, Mag is the most, uh, like, pure castery version of them. Ooh, I like him. Excalibur is, like, sword user. Volt is, like, a mix of caster frame and oh. buffing weapons. Thank you very but much. But Mag for is, like, pure Kuro. caster. Thank you so much for subbing, Kuro. We appreciate it. Um, so. I want nice. to be Shotgun Wizard. Then I would do Volt, because he can buff weapons, but also be caster. I see. Alright, goodbye, Kuro. Have a good day. Wait. Yeah. What do I do? Oh, you have to speak with Teshin first. You gotta oh. talk to the man. Alright. Teshin, hello. He, he's right there. Ah. <laughs> I'm wondering why the hell this all there you go. seems Jeez. so damn familiar. Wait, does the hair not have any fucking bones in it? No. Hairs <laughs> don't have bones. You're not. Uh, so in most of Warframe, you're not in that form. Uh, you're not seeing your hair much, if ever. So like, that's why they don't really bother doing a lot of uh, stuff for it. I see. Yeah, it'd be kind of wasted resources. Also, I understand Volt and Arc Hunters would be friends. Yes, yes, they would. As kind of Magus Caster Warrior. I would yes. say Mag is straight up caster, and Volt is kind of the hybrid of the two. Soul, Terra, or Luna. Does this matter? Luna. Um, th honestly, those decisions don't matter a whole lot, but I've always gone with the balance options for the most part. I'm gonna go with Terra. Terra. I remember her oceans. Okay. I remember. This is this is Malkador the Sigilite. That's my headcanon. <laughs> this is Malkador with a sigilite. The actual story behind that guy is very interesting. I see. Behind that guy being there. A prison from, from which you must, you must escape. escape. I'm just so tired. I'm gonna make the gross little man that is Nidus just look even more gross by putting the embolist armor pieces onto him. <laughs> we don't know what the decisions will do. I see, I see. I should probably untie my hair. Oh my god. I had a tie-up for so long that I need to, like, untie it. Oh, yeah. I always untie my hair when I'm sitting down because, like, I don't like it. I don't like the little, like, tight ball that is, like, the base of, like, the ponytail being yeah, up yeah. against the headrest. Yeah. Yes. Yo, long hair boys club? Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, I'm honestly, like, dude, if my car didn't have the, like, the, the type of headrest with the hole in the center, I would be swapping them out for ones that do. Like, I'd be swapping out the headrests for ones that do yeah. have that little hole because, like, I would hate having to untie and retie my hair every time I get in and out of the car. Equip sun and moon. Swords. <clears throat> there you go. Now you got melee. Melee in Duviri is, like, 500 times better than the gun. You use the gun to interrupt certain special attacks, but for the most part, you're going to be using melee now. Wait, so how do I switch to my melee weapon? How do I Um, attack? I believe the default keybind is E to melee. We're oh, going to have to... Not. You might have to check what your keybinds are. Yeah. It's, it's e. Oh, there you go. You find your melee. Okay. We're going to have to And then while you have your melees out, you can, I believe it's middle click to do a heavy attack. And no, trust me, having the melee key like that works out really well for the game. Like, it, it works... Trust. Have some faith in it. You know, give it give it a try in actual combat before you go changing it. Yeah. All right. Also, I downloaded For Honor, and so that's another grindy game I'm gonna have to deal with. Hold aim to block. Oh boy. I see. Yep. 
Drifter instincts. And you can attack intrinsics. Yes, to upgrade. Yes. Now you can summon horse. Nice. Can I? Oh, here's a work in progress for my home. Yeah. Exit. Nice. Yeah, you see how they have a cost listed, like 20, 25, and then you see up at the top of that menu it had the little, like, how much you have. Yes. You can gain intrinsics as you go. I have all of my intrinsics at rank 10 now, pretty much. Damn. Um, there's one that you don't want to max out, though. Opportunity. I would say you want to stop at 9 when you start leveling those up. So, are Just you little, lock on? Are you lock on? Let's see. Um, I will say I don't use the lock on because I find that the lock on will actually screw you over sometimes because like I said you occasionally have to shoot them with your gun to stop certain special attacks like to interrupt them I see um and the problem with that is that the um the lock on does not have good aim for the gun oh I see like you're more likely to actually hit your target when you're trying to interrupt their attacks by just aiming at them and shooting than using the lock on so you see the thing underneath your radar on the left-hand side? You have to specifically do the parries. Oh yeah, parry two attacks. Yeah, so you have to time your block to when they're about to hit you. It's like Beto from Genshin yeah. Impact. Yeah. Well, like, people said Daviri was kind of designed to be kind of a little bit of a Soulsborne minigame within Warframe, and I think they kind of did capture a little bit of that. I see. There you go. It's like, wait, what's it called again? Fuck. Um... Ooh, okay. Oh. <laughs> My boy Arigo loves Albedo. Projectiles reflected. There you go. There we go. Nice. Restore my health. Restore health. health. Yeah. Okay, this is like Dark Souls. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's designed to be a little bit souls borny. <clears throat> Power strike. Alright. Boom. And that wave that it sends out actually does travel Ooh, nice. a bit of a distance. That's the thing I was talking about where you have to shoot them to interrupt. There you go. Different enemies have different ones of those special moves. Like, that one is really quick, and you didn't really get a chance to interrupt it. But there you go, see? Let's see. Soulsborne Roguelike. Yeah, that's a good comparison. Soulsborne Roguelike is kind of how Daviri be. I'm trying to decide on what ephemera I want to use for Nidus. Hmm. Wait, how did I do the power strike again? Yeah, there it is. Oh, Sword Wave. Yeah. And now it says just kill him. Just kill. Use what you learned to kill. Just kill. Kill, motherfucker. Let's go. Two Take him out. <laughs> okay, so I shoot. I yeah, shoot. the Dax guys drop Lamentus. That's one of the materials. This is Dark Souls. I'm a, I'm a fucking Dark Souls player now. Be much. Be much. Dodge roll, and I go heavy attack. Shoot. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. What are you doing? Ow. <coughs> so in certain animations, you can't cancel out to shoot, so you have to be a little bit careful about that. So parry the melee them and execute. I see. Didn't I warn you? Dominic Thrax. Yeah. That is the king of this world. Who is controlling the Aura Worm. Pretty much, yeah. He's the king of this little world that you're in. He's the guy who was sitting in the chair that thunked his fist to restart the time loop. Oh, I see. Yeah. Summon my Kaith. Control. Wait, what? I get to fly? Yo. Yep. Horse can fly. Nice. And that roll, that side, little barrel roll that does, also does speed you forward, like you're on the ground roll too, so you just want to use that whenever you can. See. Like, you see how then it charges up that stamina bar? As soon as that refills, like, roll towards your objective again. You know? Siren is better. I see. I have no idea. Siren is better, you can't change my mind. Uh, that's a different weapon. Yeah, you can get different weapons for your Drifter. They're saying the Siam is better than the Sun and Moon. I don't have any of the other weapons for Drifter yet, because I've been focusing on other parts of Duviri, and because the Sun and Moon has been perfectly sufficient for me. I see. But the Siam is quite highly rated in general, so I am inclined to trust that statement. <laughs> I see. <clears throat> Let's see, what Sandana do I want for this gross man? I think the Stesia. 
for the gross man. Fever dream tension. Tension. I'll try it your way. You remember. Good. Now we can begin. We can begin. All right. Do I get to choose a frame now? Yes, I do. War frames. Brought here by the paradox. In the world, the wall. They were the weapons. Like I said, if you want to use guns and be castery, then Volt is the best play for that. So shotgun, shotgun wizard. That's my trip. Yeah, shotgun wizard. You want to go Volt, the one on the right, because he, yeah, he's electric themed. He can throw little bolts of lightning at people and do a big lightning surge in an area. He has a speed boost. And his, another one of his abilities makes an electric shield that you can actually pick up and carry like a riot shield. And when you shoot through it, you get a crit chance boost. All right, so Volt it is. Yeah. Lightning wizard. Shotgun Yeah, wizard. just pick up his shields, use them as a riot shield for your shotgunning, and there you go. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you, Calamity Dragon, for following. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Power strike for Siam and lifts enemies and prevent them from moving for a bit. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. All right. Please Fair do. point. We do have a Discord server if you do want to join. Um, we're also a game studio primarily, so if you want to watch us develop video games, that is, we also do those streams a lot. Relax. Hmm? Let your mind adjust. adjust to the dissociation. <clears throat> Wait, where's my body? Mm -hmm. Where's my body go? Where did my body go? See, that's the thing. With transference, you kind of inhabit the Warframe and your body just kind of slips out of the time stream in this space. It's weird. I see. Yeah. There's really not a great explanation for where the Drifter's body goes when you're controlling the Warframe. But now it's going to guide you through Warframe movement. So, a jump? Bullet jump. The bullet jump is the key thing with Warframe. So, crouch and then jump. Crouch and then jump. Crouch. That's the bullet jump. Oh. Yeah. What the hell? Okay. So, you can do that in air, and it, you'll bu bullet jump goes wherever your reticle is. So, if you're aiming down, you're going to jump down. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 what the fuck is this? Give me one second, let me figure this out. What? You need to be aiming up when you bullet jump, or oh, you're going to go down. There's you're look If you're looking down, you're going down. Bullet jump goes where you look. I That's see. what I was trying to tell you. <laughs> Wait, so what you is can this? wall run. So if I right click and... So jump and right click, what is that? That's glide, yeah. right? When you're aiming, yeah, you you aim glide, yeah. So you're basically just reducing your gravity so you can aim around and shoot stuff while you're jumping around. But also it lets you do longer jumps. So what does bullet jump even do? It's it's just a long, high momentum jump. And it can also go very high because, again, it aims, it goes where you aim. So if you look up, you'll go really far up and so on. It's a good way to quickly change directions. Like, look, crouch, aim straight up and bullet jump. Crouch, aim straight up, and bullet jump. Nice. Yeah, like there, right there. Yeah. Wall dash. Yeah. And you can chain all of these different movement movement types together really smoothly. What the? Okay, okay, this is fun. This is fun. Oh. So. <laughs> it takes a little getting a hold of, honestly. Oh, I yeah. think the little parkour training course here, though, is honestly better training for Warframe movement than what you get in the Warframe path. I see. It's just kind of annoying how long it takes to let you actually just use a Warframe. Ah, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, gotta get ready for work. There you go. Alright, good luck at work. Alright, GG's. Goodbye. Is weaker here in the undercroft on the surface. Wait, can you do... You can do bullet jump in midair, right? Yeah, so you can regular jump and then bullet jump. Um, but if you double jump, then you've already used your extra jump. So don't be double jumping. You can't, you can't bullet jump after double jumping because you get one extra jump when you're in the air. It's either so a bullet jump or a regular double jump. So regular jump, yeah. bullet jump. There we go. Yeah. Though, one of the faster ways to get around is bullet jump off the ground, immediately do double jump, and then immediately aim glide. Oh, I see. So I do bullet jump. It lets you maintain ground, a lot of momentum. Double jump and then immediately aim glide. Yeah. But, like, in a direction. You know, so for speed. Because it lets you keep your momentum. So shock, I'm, I'm just... In the shock throws a little lightning bolt. Right. Yeah. Speed, I just get a speed boost. Yeah. Three is the shield that you can use as like an electric riot shield. Once you get weapons, you can shoot through them through it for extra crit chance. And four is a and you can pick up the shield and then there you go. You know, you get a little defenses. And then four is a wide area shock. You just zap everybody. Yeah. And don't worry, I'm not spoiling. I'm not spoiling. 
This is fucking... I was talking about Duviri. Like, I genuinely don't know what happens with the Drifter's body when you're doing Warframes in Duviri. Wait, this is actually so cool. Oh my god. Yeah. I am... My secondary well, main is cool. my secondary main is Stormcaller, <clears throat> and this and this yeah, and this appeases me. Yeah, you're really gonna like Gyre because Gyre takes the whole throwing around electricity thing to a much further level. Volt has like oh he has the shield and he has the speed boost. Everything Gyre does is I'm going to electrocute you now. Wait, which one's better? All she does is electrocute people. <laughs> a Kavasto. Oh, your weapon options or Pyra or Lex. Pyrana or Lex. So Lex is a basically a hard hitting hand cannon. Akvasto is dual wield hand cannons, and Pyrana is a pistol sized shotgun. So, knowing that you like shotguns, I would say go for the Pyrana. <laughs> we're going with this, we're going with this, we're going with this. Yeah, grab the Pyrana, then there you go, you got a shotgun now. Shotgun. And then leader. you can, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and place one of your electric shields again and pick it up, and then you can be, uh, you know, mini shotgun with a riot shield. It's full shotgun cool wizard, you know? It's on cooldown. Oh, you need energy. Yeah, you see you have the energy bar below that, and yeah. it spends energy to do your abilities. Lex is basically... So they don't have independent cooldowns. They have a shared energy pool. Nice. So, okay, so Lex... Ooh, yeah. We got it. We get shotgun. We get shotgun. Yeah, now you get more uh, You get more weapon options here, I okay, believe. So yeah. so Bolter or so Tigress? I would take the Bolter because you need something with some more range. Nah. You'll be able to get all of them eventually anyway, but you do need something with some range. Like, you're going to need range at some point. Okay, so I'm going to pick the, um, Avasto. The Akvasto? Okay, so you're going to go for the, uh, you're going to go for range on your secondary instead? Yes. Fair. Oh, is it, oh, this is a double barrel. Yeah. Okay, double barrels aren't exactly my thing, so I'm going to go with the Bolter. And okay, I'm gonna, so going back to the Bolter or Pyrana. <laughs> and I'm going back to the Pyrana, yes. Yeah. By the way, Pyrana Prime, there's like Prime versions of frames and weapons, right? That are better versions. Some of the earlier Primes actually add new abilities to the weapons. I Pyrana see. Prime, when you get three rapid kills with it, spawns a second ghostly copy of itself in your other hand and becomes a dual wield, double the fire rate, double the magazine version of itself. I see. Tonfa or Hammer? Yeah. Tonfa or Hammer? Hammer. Um, yeah, both of them are pretty good. I think there's also another weapon there, isn't there? It looks like, or is that... One of the earlier options too. Yeah, that's just the. Yeah, both of those are decent. Oh, okay. Hard to see. <laughs> right, hammer time! Hammer time, boys! Hammer time! <clears throat> oh yeah, I forgot to color the uh, route up. Okay. Jesus! Okay, this is fast. Oh my god. Nice. Yeah, Volt is speed. I am speed. Ooh, boy. Okay. For two. <laughs> wait. So wait. How do I equip my melee weapon? How do, no. Okay. Q is my weapon, right? No. No. What? Uh, what do you, what do you mean? Hold F. You can hold F to basically switch into pure melee mode. So if you've already done that, then you'd have to hold F again to switch back to your other weapons. There you go. And there you can tap F to switch between their two weapons. Oh, I see. Yeah. And you can always tap the E to go into quick melees. And while you have your melee out, if you middle click, you'll do a heavy attack. I see. Which will consume your combo counter and multiply the heavy attack's damage by whatever your combo multiplier is showing at that time. Stop. Hammer time, yes. <laughs> so I go here, nice. Shotgun wizard, let's go. Now it's loading. Mm, I'm debating over what I want to do aesthetically for this weapon. Not sure. I think that that way around is going to be better, though. So I'm back in my body. Mm hmm. Enter Tension's Cave. Yeah, so you're going back to the cave. <clears throat> After all, it defines us. It defined us. War. War never changes. Without reflection. It defined us. He's saying us because he himself is a part of like a warrior class, and because you're, you know, a Warframe player. It's literally in the name. <laughs> yes. Did I die? What the hell? Bruh. How did I die? Um, I think you just activated a cutscene, maybe. Oh. Or no, you did die, huh? Uh, yeah, no, I don't know what's going on then, there. 
So now it's giving you a little taste of how things are going to work, where you get to pick, you get to pick up different things in different runs of Duviri stuff. I see. But in this case, it's just oh, it's the ones that you picked during that little trial. You're just picking them all back up. But normally, you'd get options for warframes, and then options for weapons there that you pick. I see. Okay, so what is this? Inspect figurine. <laughs> Broken warframe. All his horses. All his men. Soon. The sooner you will get. The, pieces, the sooner you <laughs> get out of this place. Mm -hmm. Should we equip the verglass on this real quick? There we go. Inspect the memory veil. Alright, I need to level up this uh, this dude here. I'm gonna go I'm public. Not sure if I was and uh, go to this. Alright. Wait, what is that one strike thing you memorized? Huh? That, that one strike voice line you memorized? Oh, the Valos to Arc? Yes. Do the strike intro that's meme to death? Do you want to do it? Oh, uh, well, let's see. I think I think I can give you a freebie for for, for you and for your chat. Yeah, normally so someone's got to redeem it. <clears throat> Goody, Goody, whether we want it or not, we've stepped into a war with the Cabal on Mars. <clears throat> no, let's get to taking out the command one by one. Valus to Uck. From what I can gather, he commands the siege densus from the Imperial land tank outside of Rubicon. He's well protected, but with the right team, we can punch through those defenses, take this beast out, and break their grip on Freehold. Whether we like it or not, we have started a war with the Cabal of Mars. <laughs> Good evening. Whether we want it or not, we've stepped into Warframe. <laughs> God, what, wait, I think I've memorized a Cabal and... Fuck, what is it? What is it? What is it? Fuck, I... I think it was like, you know, sister, you just sent a, a, a large blocker to the other side. I have no idea how to do drifter. Brother, enemy cabal. Uh, enemies, uh, enemies at the drill. Mm. Have on the field, bring a sword. Have on the field, bring a sword. There's a lot of wrath. You have to kind of force his voice out, you know? Yeah. I think I've, I think I've expressed the opinion that I thought Drifter was really hot. And it pisses me off. I, I think that's just time. accurate. I think that's just strictly speaking accurate, though. True. Ooh, finisher. Also, Drifter is extremely validating for the trans homies, and we stand that. True, true. <laughs> Literally always calling you brother or sister, so whatever you've picked for your character, he just constantly refers to you as, and that's pretty great. Exactly. Oh, all our homies love Drifter. Ooh. Yep. Drifter is hot. Yep, see, one of my homies just swapped in chat and Drifter is hot. Yep. Drifter is hot, man. Drifter is hot. All the homies love Drifter. <laughs> Duelist advantage, King's Collateral or Serpent's Path? Um, so I would take Serpent's Path because being able to generate Toxin status procs is pretty good. Alright. Uh, the corrupted ones, the ones that have a penalty and then a strong positive, I would say never take those unless you're 100% certain. If Hydrate, those are basically, yes. unless you know what you're doing, you shouldn't take them. I see, I have a bottle of water right next to me every single day. What see, I I only got a hydrate redeem because I was bullied into it, basically. And I don't normally have a drink next to me because, like... I kind of just, if I have a drink, I'm going to want to be constantly sipping it, because I don't want to let it get cold or get hot, depending on, you know, what kind of drink it is, right? Oh, so, like, my hydrate redeem is just, oh, take a break and go grab another drink, basically. I see, I see. <laughs> yeah. I, I normally only drink water, and I'm like a water fiend. Is there, a, is, I see. Is there like, an everything, like, possible to, like, overdose on water? I think I've done it. You can overhydrate, yes. Yes. But like, typically your body will literally stop and not like allow you to keep drinking uh, once you get to start where you where you start to feel bloated, and that's kind of like the cutoff point there. I'm dead. The most petty and trivial things. Stop dying. It's illegal. I'm so bad at this game. Dying is illegal. True. We don't do that here. <laughs> no, we don't do that here. <laughs> But yeah, once you get to a point where it'll uh, let you squat up with people, I can kind of, like, 
carry you to some degree. Obviously, you know, I'm not going to say, like, I'm not going to be like, oh, you can't actually play the content. But, like, you know, I'll make it so you're not going to be failing missions, at least. Fair <laughs> enough. Alright, so, what do I need to do? I need to open this chest, and this guy's going to spawn. But I can't. So, do I just, do I just kill him? Um, yeah. Yes, I have to kill it. Oh my god. I'm just running around spamming the fucking shotgun. I need to be spamming my abilities more, though. Right, we get swordways. Nice. Heal, 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 heal. Oh my god. Yes, yes, yes. Are we actually gonna kill it? Please, please, please. There we go. Nice. <clears throat> I'm so good at this game. Oh my god. Alright, what do we get? Nimble Gunner. Rolling grants 25 ammo efficiency. Nearby. Okay, still status. Um, critical hits. Come to go with. Ammo efficiency means a chance to not use up a bullet. Ah, that's bad. Um, Lucinia's suffering is really good, though, yeah. I got that one. Yeah, that's good both for slowing down the enemies when you get into melee with them, but also because that will make it very easy to proc other decrees that key off of having status effects, or even specifically the cold status effect applied to I the see. enemy. Shotgun Ice Wizard. There we go. Wait, yeah. I can fly. Why am I not flying? I can fly. I'll just fly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I fly with the horse 90% of the time. Uh, the time that I'm not flying with the horse is when I'm looking for resources, because one of the later upgrades to the uh, riding section of the intrinsics is that when you're on your horse, you get, like, a detection radar for uh, resource caches. Oh, and see. so I'll I'll stay on the ground so that I'm in range of the resources so I can detect them, you know? Uh. Traverse the Undercroft? What? What are we supposed to do? That's the place where you can use your Warframe. It's saying go into that. I see. And then, so you're there now. So now you just kind of hang out there and wait for it to give you an objective. And there you go. Now it wants you to kill everything. Nice. Objective, murder! Objective, <laughs> kill everyone inside. Kill everything that moves. Yeah, basically. That's Warframe for you. Nice. Just a tap again. There's even other mission types where it'll sometimes be like, Oh, you've done your objective? Change of plans. Now kill everything, too. Um, I just got downed. That's great. What just got down? I just got down where I'm trying to level this frame in uh, content that's kind of higher up there. Uh, I just got knocked on my ass. Yeah. So my There's wife. people around to res me, so it's not instant death. But like, bummer though that I got downed because I lost all the stacks that I was building up for one of my abilities, or actually for all of my abilities. The frame that I'm playing is a snowballing frame. He builds up stacks over time to buff all of his shit. Wait, Raya shield shotgun. This is busted. Yeah, a little bit. I'm like sprinting around like a coked up raccoon. Sure. Right, we, go, <laughs> we go big. We go big lightning. We go small lightning. The spark of victory has been struck. Fight on and burn mm. the flame. Nice, 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 nice. Now you are gonna die. There we go. Committing genocide is fun. Depends on Whee! the game. Now where is the other guy? Here you are. Ow! I got knocked on my ass again. <laughs> nice. Blitz Eximus, if I don't catch them, will just insta-kill me at this point. Right, we're A little bit rough. rough now. Wait, does most of the content take place in the Undercroft? Uh, no. Oh. Most of the content takes place in Warframes in a different place. You're basically... the Basically, the path that you've chosen 
is you start out in this little pocket dimension trying to escape to the main game. Oh, I see. Yeah, the Undercroft plays more like the main game than the rest of Duviri does, though. I see. So, that's kind of your taste test of what the main game is going to play like. I see. Where's my guiding light? Where am I going? Oh, there it is. We fly. We fly. I just died of fall damage. Yeah, it's almost impossible to die of fall damage as a Warframe. Um, as Drifter, it's a little bit more common of a thing. Does fall damage exist? Let me just jump off the highest cliff I know. Certainly one way to find out. True. You don't have fall damage when you're on your horse, right? <laughs> um, yes and no. The horse will kind of stagger, basically. I see. Return to me when you are ready. All right, got a figurine part. I go there, get into my warframe, and kill everything. Never mind. Inspect figurine. More cussings. I guess we're born with anger. Alright, I can now permanently have this thing in incarnate mode now, I think. Nice. So fuck yeah. But some of us. Whee! Drifter has flesh legs, yeah. Drifter has flesh legs, he does not have the metal legs of Warframes. That's kinda sad. Yeah. Uh, Elon is fucking throwing a fit. Yeah. Pretty much. I think I once told Elon to go hold this 80, 80 billion dollar L and he didn't like it. Our child king <laughs> must be one of those who was abandoned. Oh my god. Explain. I'm not listening to this dialogue. There we go. Dialogue is bad. <laughs> um, I mean, I, 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 that's why part of why I was saying that it'd be better to choose the other start is because a lot of Duviri kind of assumes that you've played through the previous stuff of the game. I like, see. yeah, you can start in Duviri, but like, it's gonna be utter nonsense without having other Warframe experience, frankly. I see. But on the bright side, you're gonna have a lot of like, oh, suddenly this makes sense moments later when you play the regular game. Fair enough. So there's that. <laughs> Alright, where are we? Sickening. I'm actually in a uh, in a squad with a vault right now. So we're going there. Nice. This challenge requires patience, persistence, oh, and just a little pinch of perspective. I right, so I took that. Um, where is it? Okay, I'm not quite to what I want to reach there yet. Why are people already trying to extract? That's a bitch move. What do you mean extract? Extracting after only 10 minutes? I'm playing an endless game mode and people are already trying to leave it after uh, like only 10 minutes when each round is 5 minutes. Like, two rounds? Bruh. Come on. Every time I hear extraction, I get flashbacks to a game I play a lot. What's that? Fucking Hunt Showdown. Ah. <laughs> and, some and sometimes Starkov. I see. Find the royal chest. Where is the royal chest? I'm That's so, the thing. I'm so That's what you gotta figure out. It's literally a hidden chest. It's literally find a hidden chest within the highlighted area. I'm so bad at finding things, dude. You would not even admit. You would not even believe. Oh, here. There it is. I found it. There you go.
Look, can you Where make are all the enemies, dude? Can you make your Shit's Warframe, not like, play, like, different types of music? Um... Yeah, no, well, there's, okay, there is a music-themed frame that you can literally custom chart music onto. Damn. Um, general frames, no, you can't do that. But this... that particular music frame, yeah, you can totally customize her songs. What is that music frame? How can I get Octavia. It? How can I grab it? Her quest line is a pain in the ass, but you can also just buy her. For real money? Um, yeah, but oh, it's, well, it's through an in-game currency that you can buy with real money, but you can also trade with other players to get that currency. Okay, that's better. I don't want to spend so, more than I have to. Yeah. Because I'm broke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Warframe is a free-to-play game. You can pay to get anything sooner, but there's nothing that you have to pay to get access to. Everything can be acquired for free through enough grinding. So it's not like D2, where you just lock... Not like D2 at all. Yeah, no, D2 is a fake free-to-play. It's a free trial game, and they keep acting like it's free-to-play, but it's not, really. Yeah. It's a free trial where the trial end is a content limit rather than a time limit. Yeah. But it's still a free trial. Wait, where is everything? What the hell? Oh. Let's go Tarnished. But yeah, Octavia is really cool, and I actually, um, I really want to get some better music on my Octavia. I've put together some things that sound decent, but, like, I'm no expert, you know? I just sing. I don't know, like, a lot of, um, like, music composition stuff. Yeah, so my Octavia stuff is kind of basic. I can give you some that I've made before, if you want to borrow them. Well, the thing is, you have to make stuff in Octavia to see how she handles things, because it's a little, it's a little weird. I see. <laughs> Yeah. Being, uh, music composing is kind of like my day job. Or night job. Yeah. So nice. That's kind of like my thing. What does this fill back up to now? Stop. Damn it, I need three more kills before I can get infinite incarnate. Okay. Oh shit. Come on, come on, come on. Kill them all, kill them all. Kill them all, baby. Collect my reward. Alright. Three glimmer and two legendary shards. Sometimes a golf ball when you're lucky. <laughs> Smoldering Strike, Fears and Bonnet Plaza. <laughs> Let's go with this one. Smoldering Strike is really good. Anything that adds just straight up power to your melee is good. Because like I said, melee is kind of your main combat method. I'm adding and then anything stuff. that heals you is good. I'm adding roll stuff. Roll stuff is good too. Roll stuff is good too. Um, I would just generally prioritize the melee thing. Like, I will take roll stuff that adds elemental effects. Like, there's one where rolling drops a frost explosive oh, yeah, that's that does, does cold procs. Yeah, that's good because it's adding elemental effects, which you can get a bunch of other benefits from. So my roll now deals poison and, um, what's it called? Frost. I thought you had a, you have a slide that does toxin, not roll. Oh, slide Different that thing. does toxin and roll that does, um, cold. Yeah. So that's, um... So help me, how do I slide? Oh! Apparently we scored a drop. What the fuck does that mean? Oh, oh there it is. Hmm. The D2 is freemium, yeah. You can call the horse mid-fall? That's useful. Yeah, and it automatically goes into flight mode when you do, which is really handy. Legitimately, activating flight mode is is like finicky enough sometimes that I'll sometimes deliberately jump off the edge of the island to activate flight mode if I'm like near an edge. So I can just yeah, I'll just do this. There we go. I did it. Let's go. Ooh, Warframe time. I died. <laughs> Alright, what's my objective? Traverse the Undercroft. Oh shit! I lived! That's I don't know how I survived- oh, never mind, I died. <laughs> <laughs> I survived the first hit from a, a Blast Eximus that time, I just didn't survive the second hit. Let's go, 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 come on, come on, come on, kill everything. Zap, zap, zap. Damn, the guy was coming to try to res me, but didn't get there in time. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I had to use one of my self-revives, which you have a limited number of, and they also take away some of the XP that you've earned for the mission whenever you use one. I see. Yeah, which is really bad, considering I'm literally trying to level up a frame, so that unleveled my frame. Damn, that's... That's pretty sad. 
yeah, it didn't fully unlevel, but like, it, it took it down a bit. I think it's time that I start heading towards extraction at this point. And you know, I wouldn't have to do this if the other people hadn't extracted so early, you know? Because there'd be more backup. There. All right, but, oh well. Where's my gun? Where's my gun? I want my gun. There's my gun. Is it Warframe a more melee focused or range focused game? Warframe is kind of, like I said, it's more ability focused, honestly, and it's like weapons are used for single targets and for cases where your abilities are all about augmenting weapons, because there are some abilities like that. I see. Um, like Volt's electric shields, right? Yes. But, uh, God, I gotta go back and res this guy because he died this time. Oh no, he just. He just early self rezzed and just took the death. Okay, fair enough, I guess, man. I was coming back for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So I don't think I don't think you can really fairly say Warframe is more melee or more range focused. It depends on what you're using, right? There are frames that are melee focused, like Calervo, Varuna. They're melee focused frames. But then there are also gun focused frames, like um, for example, like Volt would be you know a weapon user in that sense where he focuses more on the guns because of how his shield works. I see. And there are frames that buff both kinds of weapons. And so on and so forth. I see now. Bro, dude died again. Alright. Okay, actually here's a here's a brilliant D class idea for you guys. Oh. Okay, so you're a source. You're a sorcerer, right? Uh -huh. And your artificer fashioned you a crude blunderbuss, which is also a contract towards your deity. Well, that wouldn't be sorcerer. That would be more like cleric oh, warlock, or warlock. warlock. Yeah, warlock. Yeah. Uh, this warlock okay. Yes. And you actually cast spells through your blunderbuss, which also requires physical slugs and fire. So you, and your god is like fucking Seer Gorash from like 40k. So you just don't even know what your next shot is gonna fire. <laughs> it can rage from buckshot to confetti. Yeah, um, one of my regulars is, is chatting right now. Literally has Artifice in their name. They're all about, she's all about Artificers, so very excited to hear that. <laughs> yeah, so yeah like I love cool. Artificer. Well, like one Artificer and Warlock are actually my two favorite uh, classes in D&D, so... If you roll a six, I love the like customization of them. If you roll like a good roll, it's like a silver slug. If you roll like a one, it's like fucking confetti and cream cheese. See, I would never... I would not say anything like that would ever be a good idea. Personally, I think that um, anything that has a chance of making the player's actions feel irrelevant is not good design. That's why, that's why, like, Wild Magic Sorcerer, yeah, the Wild Magic Table could be worthless random stuff, but that is an additional thing after you've already cast a spell that is going to do what the spell does. You know what I mean? I just like the idea of randomization of fucking with people. And I get that, but I'm just saying it shouldn't be randomizing the primary thing. The randomization should be a secondary thing, always a secondary thing. You don't want to randomize, does my attack function as an attack should, but having a random additional effect can be alright, you know? I see. So you blast Eldritch Blast, and then you follow over the Blender Blast, which may fire cream cheese and confetti at your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm actually getting a hang of this. Yeah, there you go. Fun fact, before the campaign fell apart, the original concept for that was going to be an Artificer Warlock. Fuck yeah! that That's my homie right there. Artificer and Warlock, yep. There are some really cool things you can conceptually do with that. How many of them are actually effective? Eh, not many, but the concept space is cool. <laughs> so bounce back, Corrosive Grit, or Shatter Frost? Shatter Frost. Shattering Frost, considering you have the Frost Explosives, yeah, yeah. would be good. 
Plus, you notice how that was gold because it had two pips filled at the bottom? Yep. So those are decrees that have multiple levels. You can get them multiple times and stack up the effect. And those gold ones are rare versions where they filled in multiple levels. You filled in two at a time. It's like a double-up version of the normal decree. I see. Nice. But there are also gold decrees that aren't multi-level and are just, this decree is such a powerful thing that its base version is gold. Ooh, I see, I see. Like, there's a decree where status effects deal double damage, and there's also a decree where crits deal double damage, and those are both gold, because of course they are. You know, and you're doubling damage of things that are already going to deal a lot of damage. I see, I see. <laughs> yeah. And because they scale with your other decrees really effectively. Alright, so we enter the mirror realm again. Go here. Got a figurine part. Oh yeah, I need to get- I need to use the augments for my Nidus. The augments are really good. No, it did not. I hope you're kidding. You think I'm not paying attention? Dominus Thrax. Armor and Hexblade. So Armor and Hexblade is an interesting thing because then which which casting stat are you actually going to use for your weapon attacks? Because that's allowing you to use casting stat for weapon attacks from both sides. So which one do you actually go for, you know? That's that's an interesting question that it raises. All right, we get head next. We get head next. Cutscene time. Our whole lives, we run toward it. Something. Some thing, someone. Some wavering oasis of joy and contentment. Sad thing is. There's a Gara in this uh, defense objective mission with me that I'm using to farm up my levels, and it's like, oh, okay. So everything will die then. Because Gara is very good at killing and defending as well, so it's like, oh, okay, understood. Gara's got everything under control. I'm just kind of here. You're smiling. I am not. His memories are, are giving you something. something. As these emotions flow through you. Take from him his singular power over the world. I don't want sharesies. I want out. But look, the Dormazone. It's lit up now. Oh, there's a Volt, I think. Yeah, I'm getting Volt speed boosted here. Ah. We still are the starting frames like meta viable. Um, yeah, honestly, they're all viable into endgame. I see. In fact, Volt is one of the must-have frames for uh, a certain, like, boss fight thing that you do. I see, I see. Da, 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 da. We go, we go. Wow, shit. You hungry? Next way, I discussed with DM because he has a sort of thread of fate plot laid out, and her X-Blade weapon is going to be a large half spear, short sword stats, half large spear. Oh. Huh. Alright, so he eats. Um, where is he going to hmm. My Yeah, I get I get the Hexblade. Like, you know, Hexblade is always going to have like some kind of a thing going on, like, storyline-wise. Because if, if a DM doesn't use a Warlock patron to, like make a storyline thing, then it's kind of like, what, what are you doing, you know? But, like, how does that work with armor, is my thing. Any ETA on cross save? Galileo, Galileo, pop in my chat and ask. Um, so in the recent dev stream, the Warframe devs said that uh, they will announce cross saves release date uh, during Tenocon, I believe, is what they said. So, not... We won't have cross save at Tenocon, but at Tenocon they will tell us when we will have cross save. And I don't remember exactly when Tenocon happens, but you can look it up pretty easily, I believe. And from there, that's that's all the information we have on cross saves release. I'm not going to Tenocon because <laughs> I can't afford that. But <laughs> Wait, how much is Tenocon? How much is Tenocon? Well, I, I literally just can't afford a trip like that, you know what I mean? Oh, fair enough. Like, regardless of how much it actually costs, I can't afford the trip. Yeah, some of my friends are at Anime Expo, and I am totally not jealous. 
<laughs> yeah, I get that. They didn't say release date, they said when to generally expect it. Well, yeah, but like, that's pretty much the same difference at this stage of things. They'll, they'll tell us when to expect cross-save at Tenocon. Tenocon is August 21st and it's our, tw August 21st and also already sold out. Oh boy. Yeah, not surprising, honestly. Just so those witless peasants can piss it away. Wasted on them. Wish they put more effort into it. it. Feels like it's been a low priority, and that's why it's taking so long. I wouldn't say that. I would say that the the way that the markets are so different on the uh, the way that the markets are so different on the like the the two different or, you know ah, words. The way that the markets are so different between console and PC is kind of a big fact that they have to consider when it comes to cross save. And because cross-save would also mean that you could cross-trade, you could join clans across, and so on and so forth, right? And all of that would potentially throw the markets into chaos, and they have to be careful about it because of that. They have cross-play working, but you can't trade, you can't join clans. So therefore, while cross-play is working in terms of being able to play with people, it's not affecting the market. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's the trader player base. The market player base is, like, pushing back on cross-save in large ways because there are people who have been manipulating the player base for years that don't want to lose their manipulation and control. A one-time transfer option until then. I do agree that a one-time transfer option would be good. However, people would still be able to manipulate that to, like... Think about it. Someone could buy a bunch of stuff on, like, the platform where it's cheaper. They could farm and buy a bunch of stuff on the platform where it's cheaper and then one-time transfer that account and sell it all, you know. Let's go. Wait, so what is reconnect the power lines? What am I supposed to do? Um, so use your guiding hand, it'll help you. It's not doing anything. You see those little spinny things? You have to shoot those in a sequence that they connect. Those little spinny floaty things. This isn't doing anything at all. There's a time limit. You have to get them all connected. That one's that one's the end of a different chain. There's two different chains that go to the same place. You have oh, to start at the other end of that chain. I see. That. Yeah. Wait, it's like the it's like the fucking Ron Red. Don't buy shit and use the one time trade to get rich on a more expensive market. Yeah. What now? It's like the fucking Ron Red. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Kinda. A little bit. I only did that raid once I before I quit. I never finished it because the planus was just too fucking goofy. Hmm. I did finish it, but it was like it got to a point where I was like, "Why am I even still doing this? <laughs> like, why bother?" Is it better if I just do it on horseback? I think um, I, I would say yeah, for being able to get around. Because keep in mind as well, you can literally just stop inputting directions while you're on horseback, and you'll just kind of, like, very lazily, slowly drift in that direction. So you can kind of just set your horse going in the right direction, and then focus on aiming to hit them all while your horse is taking care of the travel. Wait, did I do it? Oh, I can have the stretch chest now. To be honest, I don't fully understand how to properly play Nidus, so I'm kind of just, like, vibing this. I know he uses 1 and 2 to build up stacks, and then that fuels his 3 and 4. I don't actually know if I should be using the 3 or not, etc. Like, this is a frame that I have very little experience with, very little knowledge of, other than just, like, the general what he do on a big picture sense. Alright, so, King's General, Tool Advantage, or Servant's Path, again. Level 2 Serpent's Path. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, King's Collateral will get you killed a lot. That's one that I do take pretty often, but without having good healing stuff and, like, really knowing what you're doing, it'll get you killed a lot. Wait, why is my Frost thing not activating? Um, oh, was that maybe on a previous run? 
And whenever you go back to the cave, it resets the decrees. Oh, damn. Whenever you go back to Teshin's cave. Yeah, it's a new set of decrees every time. It's That's where the roguelite part comes in. It's like you got these random different quest line paths and stuff, and different... Yeah. Oh, I died. Oh, well. <laughs> Bombastine was never satisfied. Bombastine was never satisfied. Mm. Yeah, Bombastine's a bitch. <laughs> really? Those look down on me. Yeah. There goes I don't like his face. They say. No one likes his face. He got he has a stupid smug face. Can I run him over? Well, today, I wish. <laughs> Damn, I can't. There is an ability you can get for your horse where it has a stomp that knocks enemies around it on its ass on their asses, so that's fun. And stop potato. No, there's just waves of them, but you do need to be killing enemies that are in that area, I believe, is the idea. I see. Highlighted area, yeah. Magic Tree, Critical Frost. Um, Luciana's Suffering. I would go for Lucinia's Suffering. Uh, yes. Frost, yeah. Critical Frost is great if you've got a bunch of crit based decrees first and then you want to start branching into status decrees. Critical Frost is great for that. I see. I but... see. Wait, what the hell? Why am I dying? What the hell? With childish nightmares. Oh, Give there he goes. Now I fly. So you'll go for some pure damage. Into the Undercroft. <laughs> this Tenno asset is destined to be destroyed by hostile. I believe I have the augment. Tornadus is four. Yeah. Fate. Oh, I, I have to guard this thing. No I should put that on. Already a new onslaught begins. <clears throat> I need to see how much Nidus Prime costs to just buy, because I don't know if I want to actually farm out the parts for him. It's like more of a pain in the butt than I'm willing to do. You can, however, reload while sprinting and jumping around. Oh, I see, I see. Which is quite handy. Give me my Raya shield. So I could boost the duration. Oh, wow. Yeah, it might be worth doing, boosting duration there. For the sake of that, yeah. Okay. Alright. Let me see what I've already got for Nidus Prime. Equipment. Inventory. Nidus Prime Systems. <laughs> Which is the most common part. Yeah, let's see what relics I have towards other parts. I may as well try and farm out 
some relic pieces if I can. General Knight is prime blueprint is from that lift. K1 relic. I should actually go into my relics menu here. Nidus, there we go. Alright, let's see. Nidus Prime Blueprint. Nidus Prime Neuroptics is a rare. Oh. Nidus Prime Blueprint. Nidus Prime Blueprint. This game? You have your ability kit. Like, every frame has their own unique things, so, like, some frames have something that kind of acts like a grenade, but not really, you know? Like, instead of having, like, a melee ability, grenade, super, class ability, you have, like, the four abilities unique to each frame. I see, Oop. I see. And you fell. <laughs> but, yeah. Every frame is very much their own thing. It's like playing different games. Yeah. Whole other characters, and there's over 50 of them, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Styanax was the 50th, and they've released a couple since him. So, yeah, I believe they're at like 53 now, maybe. I'm gonna have to look it up now because it's gonna bother me if I don't. I used to be able to re recite all the Overwatch years before I went to sleep. But I, I can't do that anymore. Battle is already half won. The winds blow Damn. Fiercely. The rains do okay, okay, so hold on. One, two, three, four. Ah! Stupid website. Big pop up ad. Damn it. Okay. Yeah, 53 frames. I was right. Damn. Okay. Cool. I believe it's Varuna, Citrine, and now uh, Calervo that are the frames that have come out since Styanax. Styanax, that 50th frame, that's the Spartan frame I was talking about. Ooh, nice. Yeah. He's fucking for, awesome. Yeah, he's, he's designed in an old school, like, design space. Where, like, I don't know if you've noticed, but with, like, Volt, all of your abilities are kind of their own thing, right? Yes. They're all very standalone powers. They don't have any special synergies between each other. They just kind of do their own things. And they're all effective, right? But a lot of modern frame design is very focused on synergies between abilities, like, where you get a unique extra effect, or the ability is cheaper if used together, or this, that, the other, right? Yes. Styanax is of the older design philosophy, where it's just standalone good abilities, and any synergy that exists between them is just natural game mechanic synergy, not special synergies unique to those abilities. See, I think as like as game devs <laughs> keep developing their shit, we have more and more. The enemy. <laughs> I guess we we have more and more kind of things we need to. We feel a need to complex things up for the sake of complexing things up. <laughs> Really right, nice to make it feel it. like it's evolving, even if that's unnecessary. Yeah. Like, the, the way that we designed, a lot, we designed our game. So if you guys don't know, the main game we're working on right now is Rizulu Universe. It's an MMORPG. And um, the systems are really complex, right? So, so the spells and the technology system is two separate things. But the spells are very straightforward, and so is the technology part. But I'm pretty sure when we keep just adding weapons and just working out the kinks, it's going to be a lot more convoluted, mm -hmm. the systems are going to be. So, mm -hmm. just going to get more complex as time goes on. Add some synergies here and there that I don't. we don't want to force players into one play style, right? But mm -hmm. trying to avoid this, you know, this ability is used <laughs> cheaper if combined with this, that's... Not exactly a easy thing to avoid. Yeah, some of that kind of stuff is good. I was just saying, like, I think it's good that in Warframe's case that they've recognized that, like, hey, we've made a lot of complex stuff lately, but simple can still work. Let's make some simple frames, too. Yep. You know, it's good to have that balance, because different players are going to value different sides of that kind of game design space. True. Wait, what, is the, what is the Spartan guy's abilities? So his first ability is you yeet a javelin that has soft tracking towards enemies. 
Yes. And it's very cheap to cast. It's cheaper than other abilities that do similar things to it. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, because the trade-off is, so it's a grouping tool. If the javelin hits an enemy, it sucks in enemies around them. I see. The trade-off to this is that unlike other grouping tools that work like it, like I said, it's cheaper to cast, cheaper energy cost to cast, but it has to hit an enemy to do its effect. I see. Meanwhile, like, all of the other grouping tools that work like that don't have to hit an enemy, but they cost more energy. So that's, that's kind of the trade that you're working with with them. I see, I see. Um, Back during my and then, Legends days, I used to play Pantheon, so I think mm-hmm. I'm going to be pretty used to it. Okay. His second ability is, um, well, <laughs> so his second I've replaced no. because there's a frame that has a pretty much strictly better version of what it does for the most part, but that's not to say that it's bad. It's a really strong ability. It just so happens that another frame has a similar and, in my opinion, better version of the same concept. Um, his second ability, you do a shield bash animation, and it sends out this wave. It looks like you fling out a bunch of shield-shaped projectiles, but that's actually misleading. Um, you actually are- the ability actually affects a cone in front of you. The projectiles are just a visual thing because it looks cool. Nice. It's not- the projectiles don't actually have to hit enemies for the ability to affect them. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. But basically, this shield bash, um, will strip armor from enemies. Hmm, I see. And it can get up to 100% armor strip with not that much strength investment. Like, you want to invest heavily into the strength stat for him, and if you're investing heavily in it at all, you will hit 100% armor strip on his shield bash. I just got fucking betrayed. Hmm. The... Um, well... Oh, you're on that scene. Yeah... But yeah, Synax's 1 and 2 are honestly kind of his most irrelevant abilities, despite being pretty good. Because his 3 and 4 are his bread and butter. Okay, so that's his frame, right? No. The crown thing? That's not Teshin. That's the point. That was not actually Teshin. That was one of the Dax, the Dax enemies you've been fighting this whole time, disguised as Teshin. I see, I see. So that wasn't actually Teshin. You weren't betrayed, you were pricked. Ah. Yeah. Real Teshin did not betray you. (laughs) Wait, so my, my, my one actually arcs across enemies, right? Oh, yeah, Sinex is 3 and 4. Yeah, like 11. Your one, uh, yeah, it'll chain in a short distance, yeah. Nice. The main thing, though, is as well that it's causing electric procs, and what electric procs do is they actually stun an enemy, and then cause them to spark and chain lightning to enemies within a very short radius every so often as well. As a area damage over time effect. Nice. But, uh, yeah, Styadax, though, the the Spartan boy, right? His third ability, this is one of the biggest things for him. Rally point. He basically makes himself a target. Like, he becomes higher aggro priority than even, like, defense objectives and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he and his allies nearby gain a massive energy generation buff and start gaining overshields on kills and assists. I see. And Styanax, by the way, has a passive where he gains crit chance based on his overshields. So, uh, lots of crits. Nice. 
But his three... The big thing, though, is the energy regen, right? He is a fucking power plant of energy generation. Right. With that. And that's huge because his fourth ability jumps up into the air, conjures a bunch of phantasmal copies of him, and just hurls javelins in a huge wave. So it's and you hear, like, a roar of an army. So it's just yeah, literally. Hard. Yeah. And here's the thing. Those javelins have guaranteed bleed procs. Nice. Bleed procs are damage over time that bypasses armor. Damn. So you can spam, if you build up high enough strength that so they hit hard, you can just spam his 4 using his 3 to fuel it, right? You can just spam his 4 using his 3 to fuel it, using the overshields that you generate by doing so as your survivability, to just get through basically anything in the game. How do I acquire this frame? So, that's the thing. He is the biggest pain in the ass frame to farm. Yeah. Uh, he is one that I would recommend just buying, honestly. But they've also given him away for free twice. Damn. Um, like so, that. you know, you could kind of just hope that, that happens again, but I wouldn't expect it, you know? I see, I see. Also, I still haven't gotten my Cyanax from the second time they gave him up for free, and I was supposed to get one. Oh. I bought one already, but I wanted a second one for a certain mechanic that the game has. Uh, which I don't want to go spoil. super into, but basically there's a thing. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil how it works or like any of the story stuff around it, but there's a thing where you can sacrifice a frame to then permanently have a set one of their abilities available to slap onto other frames. Ooh, okay. So that's why I was saying like I replaced Cyanaxis 2 with a similar ability from another frame. That's how I did that. Ooh, okay. Um, but yeah, I want to be able to put a Cyanax into that system, and I was thinking I would use the free extra one for that. But so, it never gave me the freebie. I don't know why. It's kind of bugged out. Wait, so what, what ability do you want to, of Cyanax do you want to slap on some other frame? It's not necessarily that I really strongly want his ability for another frame. I just want to get every frame unlocked in that system in case I need it. You know what I mean? Oh, I see. Probably the job. It's more of a just, you know. Well, you don't get to pick. Every frame has a set ability that they donate to that system. So, like, while you get to pick which one you replace when you're applying ability to a frame, you don't get to pick which one a frame gives, basically. Oh, I, I see, I see. Yeah, that's done for balance purposes. Oh. Like, the frame I'm playing right now, Nidus, um, he gives his second ability, Larva, which sucks in enemies similar to Steinax's one. Um, he gives that ability in that system. Mm -hmm. And really, he couldn't give his three or four, because they don't work without his unique mechanic of mutation stacks. So, see, obviously, they would give his two, you know? Giant fuckle hammer. Let's go. I figured out the air smash and it's so good. Yeah. You can also do a heavy version of that too. You can do that with regular attack or with the heavy attack. Either one. Alright, we, we go, we go, we go. Come on, come on, come on. Run, 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 run. Right, I can bullet jump. I forgot about that. Oh. Right, we're back. <sighs> Where is he? Don't you worry. Justice. Come swiftly in my kingdom. Hmm. Hmm. Like using Necros, Necros, yeah. Death, take dog out. Ah, okay. Little bunny is savage. Nice. Just the way I like it. Mm hmm. Okay, I didn't get what I wanted from those. I'm literally just gonna look it up on Warframe Market now and see. We saw the guy that resets the time is the is the real king, right? 
He is the king. Then, then who's chasing us? What do you mean, who's chasing you? What am I trying to escape from? His soldiers? His dragons? <laughs> Wait, but if the soldiers want to kill me, what interest does he have by resetting the time to let me live? That is the question, isn't it? I'm not gonna answer spoiler questions. <laughs> like, you're literally still doing the storyline. Some of these questions are gonna be answered. I see. Anyways, I'm a curious little fuck, so... Yeah, these will be answered soon enough. <laughs> I see. Nidus Prime set... Apparently I can get it for like 60 platinum. Huh. Wait, so are they, are they Marcus Playaround? Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play run markets. That is how Warframe do. Is there any kind of um, regulation with the company? Um, I mean, certain things will have varying levels of availability, which will influence the market prices, and the company themselves does control like the availability to earn the game, to earn those things in game directly. You know what I mean? I see. So that they influence, they can influence the prices a little bit, but they mostly stay out of it. Nice. Just a way I like yeah. that. Yeah, they just rotate like which prime parts are available and stuff, for example, so that you're like encouraged to farm together and to use the market for certain prime parts. I see. I play this little game called Eve. Ah, I've heard of that one. And it's all play ran market. So I, I love that company. Yeah. Yeah. Dread both 125% crit rate. Dread with the Incarnan or Base Dread? That's an important distinction. Because Base Dread is like, why? Dread Incarnan is like, okay, yeah, understandable. <laughs> Dread is actually the first Incarnan that I got. Incarnan weapons are weapons that have been upgraded or already came with an essentially an ability to activate, to charge up and activate a super mode. I see. And then they can also evolve with different other customizable uh, bonuses as well. Okay. Alright, get off my fucking horse, will ya, please? Thank you. Go, go. Dude, I love how lethal my sentinel is. My little companion, my little robo floating boy is so lethal for like seemingly just no reason but then it's like oh actually i have like the one good sentinel weapon on him and that's why he does what he does so well wake up tenno wait does it mean this is actually the start of the wake game wake up tenno wake up kindred My teammates are killing things too efficiently. I can't build up stacks. Teshin! Teshin! Guys, I think Teshin's dead. Am I wrong? Is Teshin dead? Um... I don't think so at that point. I don't. I'm not sure. He'll die later. It's hard to keep track of, of things in Duviri, whether or not things really happen, when they happen. Oh, I'm Tigris. Home Hellos again. Hello. Oh, there is a Chroma Prime here, it looks like. They got their little dragon posted up doing things. Oh, Teshin's alive. How sad. Take care. Remember, Teshin did not actually betray you. Yes. Just I think he's about to die. I will. You're feeling now. I am. <clears throat> yeah, he's dead. Rip. 
GG's, he's dead. Oh well. Driving the dragon, now I see. Yes, I am. That is a major mechanic in like the replayability uh, side of Duveri as well. Oh. Just driving the dragons around, which is fun. It, it's like a key part for uh, the progression of each run. Oh. Is that somebody's got to drive a dragon? There's like, been some talk about the fact that the uh, dragon-themed Warframe, Chroma, kind of fails in that theming, and that they should give us a, a uh, frame themed around the Aura Worms instead, to be a proper dragon-themed frame. <laughs> I personally am firmly in that camp. Chroma, one of the few dragons I'll call mid, if they fix him up, he'd be... He, if they fix him up a little, he'd stop being mid. Yeah, exactly, Lab. The thing is, Chroma's identity is so far cemented into this, like, dragon killer thing, when he was originally marketed as being the dragon frame, but he never really was. He was always the dragon killer, the the knight who killed the dragon. He was never really the dragon himself. But I, love I think they should just I lean. I, love you, I really think they should lean on the idea that Chroma is a dragon killer, right? Lean into the idea of him being a boss monster hunter, right? And give us a new frame that fulfills the dragon fantasy properly. You know what I mean? I guess Chroma, you could also adapt like a whole Siegfried like, theme to it, right? Siegfried of Beowulf. Mm, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Lean into that idea. Instead of trying to make him be a dragon when he's not, let him be that big badass knight who is capable of 1v1ing a dragon, you know? And hell, they could even make the make it so that the new dragon frame that's being proposed has a history with Chroma, you know? Imagine, like, okay, Chroma has a theme of, like, the, the four base elements in the game, right? He can cycle between them. And they already have a thing where you fight specters of frames for a part of your progression. So imagine if the quest line and the acquisition for this new dragon frame involved having to fight a chroma specter of each element. And the idea is that each of these chroma specters has taken a piece of this dragon as a trophy from when they killed him. And you're trying to bring back this dragon. That sounds like a good, good idea, I think. Right? Yes. Rip chair, I guess. Rip chair. Oh, and there's the last piece of the doll that you've been rebuilding. I see. Chrome is actually considered the dragon just from how he came to be alone? I see. That's bullshit. No. He is not the dragon. Like, I'm sorry, but no matter what DE wants to say, he doesn't play like a dragon, and his physical model is a knight wearing a dragon pelt. Like, he's not a dragon frame. He was honestly, them calling him the Dragon Frame was kind of false advertising in terms of how poorly he actually manages to fulfill that. Like, I love dragons, and I like Chroma. I mean, obviously I love dragons, you know, I am dragon. I am dragon here, you know. And I, I love the idea of Chroma, but what he is is not what he was proposed to be. Do you not know how, Do you not know how Chroma got his pelt? Yes. I understand, like, the lore and stuff behind that, but my point is that when his actual gameplay and his end result aesthetic is so far from actually being a dragon himself, he doesn't really fulfill the promise of a dragon frame. You know? You have to put lore aside at some point and say, okay, but does the frame actually capture that essence in anything other than just their lore? Because if not, then the lore isn't matching the frame in gameplay. And considering how much work went into making his model be able to separate into the pelt, trying to change his gameplay would be harder than just adjusting his look. You know what I mean? Trying to change his gameplay and make him more of the, the true dragon would be harder than trying to change his lore and adjust it, or even just tweaking his gameplay to lean further into being a dragon hunter. 
Because, like, no amount of lore can fix a frame not feeling right to play. You did. But you reset it. You gave it all back to him. Why? I guess it felt like a good trait. Hmm. You know what you're just talking about there in the cutscene when he says it was a good trade? Yes. What do you think he's talking about? He resets you, so you give it back to him. Yeah, but n no, like, why Why was it a good trade for your drifter to reset it and give it back to Thrax? Because he doesn't want to just sit there and just be a fucking timekeeper. No. Look at who you're talking to, my dude. Merlin? You reset it to bring back Teshin. Oh. You traded control to get Teshin back. Oh, I see. Because by resetting it, Teshin's death is undone. <laughs> I see. Is Teshin out of Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the whole point was that, like, the Drifter has come to appreciate Teshin. Literally, the Drifter went from being this just, like, depressed, angsty, stuck in this time loop to being able to break free and be his own person by Teshin's teachings. I see. Leave or what will you do? stay? I would say leave Dewey at this point so we can actually, you know, play together. Squat up. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Yeah. Uh, Didn't see Chroma. Well, don't see Chroma's knights more dragon like considering they sent a Tenno kill squad to kill Chroma. Saren, Volt, Frost, and Ember. Chroma, according to Lore, is way too adaptive to simply be killed. I'm gonna be okay. a for a second. But he go is physically a knight. It's okay. It's chat for one minute so yeah. Alright. Oh, uh, so yeah, Galileo, get bonked. Yeah, I'm the one who dragoned these knights. <laughs> but, um. Yeah, so the problem, though, with that argument of, like, oh, you don't see him as a knight. Physically, he is a knight. That is his design. His actual physical and kit design is a knight who killed a dragon and harnessed its power. Nothing about his kit actually sells the idea that he is a dragon. Because the only dragon-like ability he has is a breath weapon, which his four then reveals is not actually his own. It's an ability of the pelt. So at that point... Nothing about him is a dragon. Oh my god, Lavender is saying normal Teshin and wizard Teshin both is kind of hot, of course. Of course you would say that. And Chroma's adaptiveness and, you know, being hard to kill, he needs a buff in that regard. He needs, like, numerical buffs for sure, because he's kind of fallen off in that regard. But, like, that's that's something that can be easily just numerically buffed. That doesn't help with the playstyle issue of him not fulfilling his theme. Because he really doesn't. Like, you're still just talking about lore there, when you say you don't see him as a knight and he's more dragon-like. But in gameplay, he's not dragon-like at all. And again, overhauling his kit to not have that whole, like, oh, he's actually the knight wearing a dragon pelt thing that kind of ruins it, would mean undoing a lot of ex expensive model work of having his splittable model. So, it makes more sense to lean into him being this dragon killer knight, and give a separate frame the actual true dragon distinction. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, let's throw that on. I'm modding up uh, this weapon again, adjusting it a little bit. I like my Chroma Dragon Boys, I'll just stick where I know on Chroma, especially Chroma Prime. Yeah, and I mean, I still enjoy playing Chroma, but like, he exists basically just for his 2 and 3. And statistically, they're too weak now to keep pace fully, which is a bummer. So, yeah. Uh, let's see, what else can I throw onto that? So I'm back. Mm, I feel a little more reload speed. I'm back. The discussion of Chroma just kind of continued into being a dragon or not. Okay, I, I want to see what you think. So, if a frame is marketed as the dragon frame, right? But then one of his abilities is literally taking off the dragon pelt that he's been wearing the whole time, and he has a classic knightly style helmet face underneath. 
Would you not say that that's kind of a bit of a... Oh, he's not actually a dragon. That's kind of a bait. He's a dragon killer. That's what it is. Exactly. His only dragon ability is a breath weapon, which actually belongs to the pelt. And that's shown by the fact that when the pelt comes off, it spams the breath weapon. <laughs> His other abilities are just elemental themed buffs and a general armor and weapon damage buff, which both feel very in line with a dragon hunter. I see. And here's the thing, even like in D&D, right, look at the, some of the recent dragon material that came out for D&D, it had a bunch of stuff about getting dragon power imbued gear. You, you can know? use the belt, you can use the breath without the belt, I see. Grenier. Yeah, you can use the breath without the pelt, but it's still a power that is given to him, that, that, it, it still comes across as a power given to him by having killed a dragon. It's not truly his power, it's a borrowed power. That's how it comes across. Because what sense does it make for a knight helmet to be blasting out breath weapons? He is a liar and a fraud. Yeah, yeah, my chat's saying he's a liar and a fraud. I do agree with he needs a, a rework of buffs. Yeah. I think, and again, I'm my, I'm only proposing the idea of reworking him into leaning into that whole knightly dragon hunter thing if that comes alongside getting a true dragon frame. Because I don't want to not have a dragon frame. I am dragon. I want dragon frame. <laughs> you know? But I'm just saying, if they gave us an aura worm frame... Then they could make Chroma fully a dragon hunter with a big rework, lean into his like massive tankiness, adaptability, and damage output. And there's a lot of potential there if they were to lean into that. So, let's so now say you're getting the original intro right now. So let's say I want like, to make a Warframe game. that looks like a Hive Knight. What do I need to do? A Warframe that would visually, like aesthetically, look like a Hive Knight? Yes. Um, hmm. Does Nidus have stuff for that? I don't think so. I'm checking real quick. I want it to look yeah, as really. disgusting as possible. I mean, helmet shape wise. Hmm, I mean, helmet shape-wise, there's a couple that could theoretically work for different styles of Hive Knight. I see. But, yeah. Yeah, Dragon Knight, right. Lean on the Dragon Knight theme for Chroma and give us a separate dragon frame. Give them a cool history. There's so much lore potential there. And hell, that history could be... They could actually kind of, like, retcon link the new... Or like, the idea of the Aura Worm frame into Chroma's existing backstory, right? And have it be that... Haunting down the oral worm frames and killing them is why they sent a death squad after Chroma. Because it's like, yo, dude, you killed one of our own. Even though he's a dragon and we get that's your thing, that's not cool. <laughs> like, and that's why they sent the kill squad after him. You know, they could make that work. Wait, how long is this cutscene? Well, this is the original main, like, cinematic game intro, so it's going to be a little bit long. But, like, look how fucking cool that is. True. <laughs> Not sure that would make sense. Chromo's a rogue frame. Well, that would actually potentially make it make even more sense. Is, like, other frames hunting him down because he killed one of their one of, one of of their frames. He killed the Aura Worm frame. Oh, that's and that would be why other frames would hunt him down. It's like, oh, he went rogue, and he went rogue so far as to kill another frame. Therefore, he has to die. That, that actually works really well, then. That's my boy Volt. Let's go. And yep, there's Volt. Yep. There's Excalibur. Nice. <laughs> uh, let's see. I guess I just go back into Hydron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Volt just Palpatine in those motherfuckers. <laughs> Ironically, that's not a thing that Volt can do. He can't just sustain, like, maintain an electrical blast like that. That's sad. Um, that's what Gyre does. Gyre is the continuous electricity. Volt is surges of electricity. So who's better? They're both very good for different things. They just, fulfill different purposes. I just want to cackle my way through enemies. Oh, Gyre. Gyre. Gyre, yeah. Uh, she has a combination of abilities. I spawned in in a stuck position. That's rude. Okay. Um, anyway. Uh, Gyre has a combination of abilities where you basically get an electrical kill aura. Nice. Yeah. 
Like, literally, you just walk up to dudes and they get electrocuted to death automatically. Now she's gonna link it with a warframe, isn't she? Like a dream. Damn, look at those fucking eye details, man. Damn. Yeah, the cutscenes are really pretty. Wait, she's gone. She just linked. Yeah, it's a different time. It's literally a different time, look. It's like showing the past and then the present. Wake up, Tenno. Yeah. Choose my Warframe. Volt. Yes, yeah, so now you actually choose the one that you start with, like, for real. For real. For real, for real. For real, for real. <clears throat> By the way, there are going to be some, uh, like, very much unavoidable spoilers due to gameplay stuff. Okay. Like, the fact that there is, like, a person that controls the frames. Mm -hmm. That you can gain access to that mode. I'm just, you know, putting that out there now. There is like a like a real you that controls the frames that you can occasionally play as. That's a drifter, right? That you're gonna see. The drifter is one version of that. I'm not gonna get into the versions thing because that would be unnecessary spoilers. I see. I can't lose another tenno. But like, um, there are characters that refer to you. There's there's characters that refer to you as tenno. And there's characters that refer to you as Operator, so people normally just refer to that mode as Operator form. Or, uh, some people called it Kiddo mode at one point. Because there's a character that calls you Kiddo as well. I'm not going to specify on that as well. But, yeah. Any of those is kind of all referring to the same thing. Wait, so is this the real tutorial or the secondary tutorial? This is the real tutorial. This is the, like, if you were playing Warframe before Duviri came out, this is the tutorial you get. I see. Excuse my melee. This is what you would have gotten right away if you'd picked the Warframe path initially. I want the sword or the staff? The staff. Um, the staff does have some better value in the early stages. I see. I know all these Mark 1 weapons are kind of trash, but the staff has a certain uh, benefit for some of the early mini bosses you got to deal with, basically. I see. I see. My understanding. Yeah. Although I'm thinking when we do play together, I'll throw on Gyre so I can show her off in person. <laughs> so you can see what she do. I love Gyre. Just Emperor Palpatine your way through everyone. You don't even have to actively do anything. You just set it and forget it. <laughs> I see. If you happen to use the electric spam weapon, though, there's a rifle that is like an electric beam gun, and that adds so much to her. Like, it's practically an extra, it's practically a fifth ability in her kit. Wait, hold L control this side. Oh, there it is. Wait, is it auto sprint? There's a cache of weapons ahead. Um, you can. I think you can actually sprint on top of that. Hold shift. Nice. Of course, you can still bullet jump and stuff. It just hasn't said to you that you need to do it yet, but you can still do it already as well. Yeah. And now you get weapon choices. You get pistol or kunai. Because Warframe is technically supposed to be kind of like space ninjas. So that's why it gives you like ninja E options as well as not so ninja E options for each of these stages. All right. We go, we go pistol. Fair enough. Where's my hammer? Do I get the hammer back sometime? You don't have the hammer now. No. But you can build one eventually, but you don't just, like, get it back. I see. It is an early weapon, so you'll be able to build it relatively soon. Oh, Calamity found the thing again. Found the lore. Chrome lore found. Never fully released for battle. Ah. Okay, so he was never, like, set loose by the Oricon. Interesting. Roma gained sentience of his own. Interesting. 
kind of like another frame <laughs> that would be a little bit spoilery. How many spoilers is there? This game's story has been developing for basically as long as Destiny's has. Damn. Because they came out around the same time. So, yeah, that kind of answers your question, I think. I started playing Destiny like when Witch Queen was released. So. Oh. Alright, do I get my shotgun now? I believe you should get a primary weapon. Oh wait, did you not get a? Did you get? Did you get a primary weapon like a bow or an auto rifle? It should have been. No, not 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 yet. No. Oh okay, yeah, the ship blows up, right? Okay. He never was fully a dragon. They dealt him a mortal blow and they sent a leak kill squad to finish him, but they never came back. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. I have to kill Captain Gordon. Right. Vor. Yeah, his name is actually Vor. <laughs> if you think that's bad, get this. The, the Grendel, right? The black hole stomach frame? He eats people, right? So he's literally a Vor frame, and one of his abilities has an audio cue when it activates that sounds like he's saying uwu. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Man, the artist is gonna have a field day with that one. Right, yeah, I know, they already have. It's upsetting. <laughs> Remind me to never search that up on that one spicy website. <laughs> what? I could never search that on that one spicy website. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yes. What for energy thing do I put on here? Hmm. This guy's a fucking simp. What am I doing? Vor is weird. Go made a pelt of these frames and gain some of their elemental powers. Yeah, so he was never really a dragon. Right, okay. So, exactly. Ooh, he's gonna force you. Oh no, laugh. Yeah, exactly. So, lean Chroma into being this super unstoppable killing machine that has, like, draconic power through, like, basically stolen power, right? Power claimed through strength. You know, lean into that idea and give us a true dragon frame. You know? He was meant to be unstoppable. Yeah. And yet, he's not good. He's not good now, and that's so sad. What is this, false advertising? <laughs> that's what I was saying, Chroma's basically false advertising the frame. Okay, so we get auto rifle or bow? <laughs> yeah. I would say, if you, I would say personally I like the auto rifle more, but, auto like, the bow isn't bad. Yeah. They designed him to be ever adapting, like redacted faction. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I know it. I know what you're getting at there. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense. Oh, you also did you uninstall Destiny? Oh yeah, Damn. I uninstalled Destiny. Wow. Mm -hmm. You hated that much. Now. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I Lightfall ruined the game for me. In my in my opinion, Lightfall has ruined the game. Destiny is no longer the game that I enjoyed for... I, I, I literally... I played Destiny 2 like it was a fucking full-time job from 2019 till when I quit after Lightfall. Jesus. Stop yeah. What? Oh, my Containment military drones to catch Chroma. That didn't go well, I'm betting. Yo, why does your channel point symbol kind of look like a symbol from Acceleracers? <laughs> a mine? Yeah. Oh, I, I it was it was Froku that designed it for me, and just asked them. They did all the. But like, channel do you do you know what I'm referencing? Nope. Um, oh fuck! All. Damn it! Damn it! Well, uh, hey, at least there's this. <laughs> it's kind of like Mike Quirk. <laughs> Here we go. I'm gonna do this. Th this is what I actually like. I, I gotta like clear my throat, drink some water. Again, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't have the mommy voice down, so I can't exactly do it. Mm. 
Uh, and I've been told that I just kind of neutrally have a daddy voice half the time anyway, and I just lean on that. <laughs> Fair enough. I played a D&D &D character... Yeah, I played a D and D character who was supposed to like always sound seductive, even though it like wasn't his intent. Um, because the whole point was for him to be like a subversion of a lot of tropes. So like he sounds seductive, but he's actually in a happy relationship, and he's never actually trying to seduce anybody. He seems like he should be super edgy with his backstory and his subclass and everything, but he's actually the most wholesome, sweet, positive guy ever. You know, all that, all that kind of stuff. A lot of subversion. Um, and for his voice, I literally just did an ara ara and then locked my voice there. It was the voice for the character. It's just permanent ara ara voice. I see, I see. But yeah, you gotta lean on, you gotta have some kind of voice, right? Mm -hmm. It's Yeah. It's the representation. And because I do voice acting stuff, yeah, and because I do voice acting stuff, I have uh, quite a few voices I can do. Funny thing is, we actually need voice actors for a game, so if, you wanna, if you're interested. I'm most certainly interested. Fuck yeah. Oh, so this daily tribute, that's a thing literally for every day that you log in, you get a little login reward. I see. And at certain points, you get weapons from it. You get special weapons at certain stages of the login reward progression. What, what do you mean my network is not responding? Huh? Uh, it's just a little, it has a little hiccup. It'll be okay. I see. Storm my ship comms. Give it a minute. Yeah, you need your ship comms. What? I think it might be up in that area. Oh, wait. Oh, no, you actually did have a full connection error. Okay, well. That's unexpected. Well, well, well. <laughs> um, I guess probably go on a BRB and reboot the game. This is what I'm going to do, actually. My voice is fried, and I can't talk anymore. Oh. So, I'm basically at my limit. I, I need to really upgrade that oh. aspect. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, this was a pretty good stream, and I need, yeah. to go, I need to go heal my throat. Okay. That is what, that, that's what usually happens when I stream for two hours. My throat just dies, and I can't, uh, and I can't speak. Ah. Uh. Okay. Well, if you need some help training in the endurance department, I regularly go for like four plus hours if I have time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Froki lasts for way longer. Perhaps than I can I teach you the ways. Froki lasts. Froki stream out way longer than I am because they have more. That, there's so much possibility for a dirty joke there. Operator, you have returned. I want you to realize how much I had to hold myself back. I know. <laughs> it's like their 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 voice endurance is way higher. So yeah, I get you know, that. I. I got a lot to learn from them, and you know, yada yada stuff like that, right? So yeah, thank mm -hmm. you so much for the years. Thank you so much for collabing with me. I know this is very impromptu. I just gotta sit out yeah. the blue, but yeah, no, but that was cool. It was really cool. It's yeah. one of the great things about that server. Yes. Just meet, meet cool people. But yeah, this is what I'm gonna call it today. Sunday, we don't have stream actually. Um, I got a, <laughs> a I got a celebration with my family on set on Saturday. No, on Sunday <laughs> that I'm gonna go to. So yeah, thank you so much again for doing Understandable. Stream. Monday, so next yeah, next course. week's schedule should be posted around seven, Sundays, ten o'clock. Just keep an eye out for that. Our Twitter is um, Ask Spark Ferris if you mm -hmm. wanna if you wanna look at our development process and our stream schedules. So yeah, thank you so much guys for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye. See ya. I'm going to carry on.